I was, I was taking his blood pressure, so I, was, I was actually, uh, I, I knew he was in trouble. And I looked over to the cardiologist who I was working with, and I said, uh, please pay attention here, you know, Gus is in a lot of trouble. So the cardiologist comes over me and says, Wes, look, I want you to stop the test right now. Gus says, oh yeah, why the hell do you, you want to stop the test for? I just got on, I'm doing really well. And the doctor says, Gus, because you're going to die, mate. And Gus goes, good decision, doctor, you're a champion. <laughs> So, you know, when, when, I actually, when I actually took that test, you know, I re realised with a strong conviction how someone, it really struck me how someone could put themselves in such a terrible, terrible condition. Now, this guy was wealthy, don't get me wrong, he invested in property, he was CEO of a, a really, you know, top-notch business, had, had cash flow coming in all over the place, so I was just chatting before I uh, set him up. But he had completely neglected his, his health, and, you know, if I had to bet, I, I would say for the next five years, it's not looking good for him. I, you know, I'm pretty sure he went through further testing, and if I had to, to put money on it, I would say that he had already had some form of heart disease. So, um, you know, it's another point that really hammers home to me that if you, you know, you can be really driven to, to create something for yourself, but you need to look after the, the other side of things so that you know, they all happen together. Interesting. Now, another topic that I like speaking about um, when I talk in health and fitness is about fat. It's really hard to talk in health and fitness without bringing out the topic of fat because it's almost everywhere. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but I am going to focus on one thing that I think might be interesting for you guys today, and that's it's called the fat quota. Have you heard this before? Great, if you haven't, listen up. Um, the fat quota states that a male burns about 60 to 80 grams of fat per day. The general male organizations, <coughs> okay, so a male Burns about 60 to 80 grams of fat per day, sitting down doing nothing. So, if Richard, for example, if I got him to sit down here from the morning to night and we measured the amount of fat he burnt, his muscles, his brain, all his organs would consume about that amount of fat. For a female, it's about 45 to about 55 grams. Now, females usually don't have as much muscle mass as males, so they don't burn as much fat. So also you've got to do the hormones a little bit. So if we take that and put that at the back of your mind, and now we look at some of the, the, the content, because the equation is, is very simple. When people say to me, Wes, I want to lose weight, Wes, can you really help me out? You know, I need to, to look great for this wedding that's coming up, or I just want to change my body shape. And I take them through this, and it's, it's very, very simple. I mean, if you eat less than that, on an on a, uh, ongoing basis, combine that with exercise, then on the whole, you're going to be on a, on a degradation process where you're losing. Whereas if you eat a whole lot more than that on a regular basis, it'll add up, it'll add up, it'll add up, and you'll tend to put on on the long term. Okay? So what I've done is I've just put down some um, foods, and please be interactive because I need your, uh, need your energy in that. Some foods that we eat obviously contain fat. And however, and one of the things I recommend all of you go and do is invest five bucks, you know, to get yourself a fat counter. And all this does is it just takes you through some various foods and how much fat is involved in them. Okay. Um, so let's have a look. Let's let's say for example, I'm gonna take some foods now and I want you guys, there's no prizes. No prizes, but um, we're gonna just guess how much fat is in each of these foods. If I take the water, don't be jacked. 60 grams. Does anyone want to guess? 60? You're close? A little bit lower? Yeah. 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 45. 45. It's an auction. 45 grams. Um, let's, let's have a look at uh, one piece of KFC chicken. <laughs> Now, my brother, he can eat six pieces of bang, just like that. Okay. Big Mac uh, has, yep, 24 grams of fat. Okay. Now, what about a large chips? 30. From McDonald's or KFC? Chips and chips. Fish and chips. What about a steak? 500 yeah, yeah, yeah. How many would you get? Revive or? 50, bang on, well done. 500 grams. Okay, so that would look 
something like this. You've got your plate there. The can, you've got your steak there. <laughs> That, um, you know, just, just, just on that point, when you look at the Asian countries or, or, or some of the Asian villages, when you go out and have a look at their diet, you find that they, they have you know, rice, a couple of veggies here, and you know, a few bits of meat here and here. And you, you don't really find that people in, if you go out into the rural Asian villages. But when you come to the Asian cities, where it's all westernized, you find, you find that. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a very, very, it's a fairly simple equation in the way that's working. Um, and a few other things, you know, I've, I've got down here, uh, full cream milk is, is fairly fatty with between 8 and 10 grams per, per glass. Um, butter and margarine can be also fairly fatty as well. So it's very important that uh, you keep this in mind because let's, 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 if you go to McDonald's and you have a, um, a Big Mac and a couple of chips, you already eat your quota. Now if you've had breakfast and you've had full cream milk with that and you have a steak for dinner, and you have a you know a couple of pieces of chocolate afterwards. Can you see how it can go <coughs> way over your quota and it's really hard to salvage things from there? So I'm not saying don't eat any bad food, it's not saying that at all. I'm saying that when you do eat them, you need to moderate yourself and obviously keep in mind if you maybe invest in one of these or um, something in, in a similar fashion that you can uh, certainly help you with your goals in terms of staying healthy for the long term. How are we going to time now? Two more minutes? Okay. Right, there's a few other things I had to talk about, but I'm going to cut to the chase and speak about... No, there's two, two options. We can do a group vote here because I've only got two minutes to speak. We can do a risk factor check. Risk factor check is where I take you through what I look at as an exercise physiologist in terms of your risk factors and, and how risky that might be for you. Or I can take you through uh, some specific recommendations on, on exercise that um, we had mentioned before. So quick vote, who would like to go through the risk factors? And you guys can check off yourselves. <laughs> One person. <coughs> Who would like to go through some specific guidelines on? <laughs> Come and have a chat to me later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've probably all heard of this. It's called the FIT principle. Frequency, intensity, time and time. Frequency, now you're looking at Try to aim for at least two to three sessions a week. It's, uh, the main recommendation by the ACSM, which is the American College of Sports Medicine, is that you accumulate 100 minutes of cardiovascular <coughs> Accumulate 100 minutes. Okay, so it might be five minutes in three blocks in one day, and five minutes in three blocks on another day, or it might be a 20 minute block or a 35 minute block, it doesn't really matter. As long as the exercise you add up over the, over the week adds up to about 100 minutes, okay? Intensity. In terms of cardiovascular activity, uh, you're looking at, on a scale of 1 to 10, which is called the RPE scale, the rating of perceived exertion, 1 being you're sitting at home putting your feet up watching the TV, 10 being you're giving birth to three babies at once. <laughs> intensity. Uh, you're aiming for on a cardiovascular, now I've never done this like that, but, um, you know, that's what I'm assuming. Uh, on, on, the, on, on the cardiovascular scale, you're looking at between about 6 and 8. Out of 10. Okay, so when I say 6 and 8, you're pushing yourself about that on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay, in terms of strength training, you're looking between about 8 and 9 out of 10. Now, obviously, it's different for everybody. These are very, very general. If I sat down with each and every one of you, it would be a little bit different depending on the situation. But in terms of strength training, to really get the benefits of strength training, which is increased metabolism of your muscles, increased density of your bones and your muscles, all those great benefits, you really need to keep pushing your muscles more than you did last time. Okay, so for those people who go to the gym and do the same thing every single time, it really, really worries me because those people are great. They've got great intentions, but they don't actually go in there and do the best for themselves, which is make sure that you push always more than you did previously. Otherwise, you know, it's like you're on a plateau. Okay? You want to you try and improve every time. You don't want to go up, stay the same, and stay the same, stay the same, stay the same. Because as you get older, your body regenerates. Okay? So if you stay the same with your training, things will actually go backwards. So you always want to do that. And personal training is great. That, if you so wish. Um, time, we spoke about 100 minutes a week. Okay, try to aim for at least 20 to 30 minutes of strength training as well, which is very important. And type, you know, cardiovascular, we spoke about strength training, we spoke about. I'd also recommend flexibility training, um, which, you know, you need to keep your muscles nice and, and long and loose. You don't want tightening up, tightening up and getting into bad posture. 
some posture training as well. So that, that's just, as I said, really, really brief, and I'd love to spend more time on it. I think we, we are limited to some extent today um, on today's presentation. But are there any questions to finish up today? I have. <coughs> Sorry, avocados. Avocados? No, good fat or bad fat? Awesome good, fat. Good story. Or awesome fat. Great. Yeah. So, so avocados, are, I mean, fat is absolutely essential. We need to eat fat. If we didn't eat fat, we'd die. Okay, so don't want don't you to go home and say, that's it, cutting out all the fat, I'm going to go to zero on my fat consumption so that I can lose this and this amount of time. That won't happen, you actually die if you cut all the fat out of your diet. You need it, it, it helps in uh, your nervous system, it helps insulate your body, helps uh, keep the heat inside, it's very, very important, it helps you know, do all sorts of functions. So we do need fat. Avocado has good fat, which means that it tends to clear out our arteries rather than stick in. Now, bad fat will stick in your arteries, good fat will help clear it out. But having said that, Dale, um, if I was to get 10 avocados, skin them all and scull them all right now, I would still get fat. Okay, so does that make sense? You can have good fat, but if you eat a lot of it, you can still get fat. <laughs> you catch 22. Okay, almonds, the Almonds, nuts are, yeah, similar. Good fats, but if you eat too much of them, you can still get fat. Okay, so you might have great cholesterol levels, but you have another risk factor, which is your overweight. <coughs> and obviously you want the best cholesterol levels. You want to have low risk factors and you want to have good weight. So, Giovanni, a question for, um, um, what about fat that gets um, stored as a byproduct of unused energy? Fat that gets stored as a byproduct of unused energy. So you're yeah, talking about like fat that gets stored as... Like, um, well, fat, like um, if, you, if you eat too much... Um, you have too much carbohydrates and you don't use them. What's the process that they get stored as fat? Okay, um, it's, a, it's a fairly complex process. We can have a chat later on because it's, it's fairly complex. Um, my, my philosophy personally, and you may all have different ones on this, is that carbohydrate consumption is good for you. Carbohydrate is the storage fuel for all your muscles. Your brain needs glucose to function. And you shouldn't really restrict yourself from having carbohydrates. It takes the body a lot more energy to convert carbohydrates to fat than it does for the body to convert fat to fat. And it will usually store carbohydrates as glycogen in your liver or your muscles. Okay, so that's, that's my take on it through the research. And one of the key studies that, that has, has brought me to that direction is these scientists, which is unethical today, what they did was they got two groups, and one group they got to... Uh, uh, eat a lot of carbohydrates, 12 bowls of parsley to be exact, they force fed them. And after they force fed them, they infused more carbohydrates into their body. Okay, this is highly unethical today, it wouldn't pass today, but this is what happened. And in the next it's probably two to eight hours, they measured the fat storage that happened on them. And very little in fact got stored on their body as fat, and, and it all got stored as glycogen in their liver. Okay, so to me that's very convincing that carbohydrates doesn't get stored as fat unless you absolutely force feed yourself and then you go and infuse glucose into yourself again, which not many people do these days, you know, which is great for American society. So, well I think that's uh, the end of the presentation today guys, you've been an awesome audience, I look forward to joining heads with you in cash flow and hopefully we can learn something. Thanks a lot.